All right, so in this topic, we are finding mole ratios from chemical formula. So we have the chemical formula for methyl tert butyl ether, and um, it says that a chemical engineer has determined by measurements that there are 71 moles of hydrogen in a sample of methyl tert butyl ether. How many moles of oxygen are in the sample? Okay, so let's look at our chemical formula. Here it is. It looks pretty complex, but we know how to break down this chemical formula to get the total number of carbon, hydrogen, or oxygen atoms in one molecule of this, so no biggie. So what they're asking us to do is, uh, given um, if, if, we are, if we are told that there are 71 moles of hydrogen in a sample of this, so this is just one molecule, but of course a sample will have many, many, many more molecules. So if there are 71 moles of hydrogen in a particular sample of this, how many moles of oxygen are in the sample? We can determine that because of the law of constant composition. Uh, the, in, in, in this sample of this, if it's a sample of this, pure substance, it's not uh, contaminated in any way with anything else, if we have 71 moles of hydrogen, we should be able to determine how many moles of oxygen we have based off of uh, what we call the mole ratio. So let's look at this molecule, the chemical formula. How many atoms of hydrogen are there in one molecule of MTBE? We have three atoms here, and then we have three atoms here, but there's a three outside of the parentheses, so that would be three times three, nine, plus three is 12. So there are 12 hydrogen atoms in one molecule of MTBE. How many atoms of oxygen are there? One, and that's it, just one. So oxygen is one atom. Well, we can take the number of atoms of each element in one molecule of this and also build what we call mole ratios from those numbers. It works like this. In this substance, there are 12 moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. We can, we can also write it as this. There are 12 hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. But what we need is the mole ratio, so we're going to use this form of it. And it's always going to hold true because of the law of constant composition. For this substance, for every 12 moles of hydrogen, I will have one mole of oxygen. And that's the bottom line. So what this will serve as is a conversion factor for us. This mole ratio serves as a conversion factor. What are we converting? We're converting from moles of hydrogen to moles of oxygen. We're converting from one element to another, from one thing to another. How do I go from amount of hydrogen to amount of oxygen? Use the mole ratio as the conversion factor. The mole ratio will allow us to do that. If you notice, in this uh, mole ratio, uh, it relates amount of oxygen to amount of hydrogen. That is our starting point, and here is our ending point. So this is the only conversion factor I need. So if we have 71 moles of hydrogen in this sample, and I'm not going to write this as H2 because this is not pure hydrogen, but we're talking about hydrogen in this sample. So it's not existing as a, as a pure uh, substance just as hydrogen, but it's hydrogen in a molecule um, within a compound. So. I'm going to just write 71 moles of H. So if I have 71 moles of H, we can use the mole ratio to tell us how many moles of oxygen we would have if there were 71 moles of hydrogen. We already know if there were 12 moles of hydrogen, I would have one mole of oxygen. We got that from the chemical formula. So if I have 71 moles of hydrogen, what we're going to place here is this mole ratio. The mole ratio is 12 moles of hydrogen for every one mole 
of oxygen. We placed 12 moles of hydrogen on the bottom because of our units here. We need our units to cancel out. So that leaves us with moles of oxygen for our answer. So 71 divided by 12 will give us 5.9167 moles of oxygen. We're limited to two significant digits, so 5.9 moles of oxygen. So if in this sample, uh, say I have a whole lot of this, it doesn't matter. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter how much, but uh, if I have a sample that has 71 moles of hydrogen in it, then I should also expect that there are 5.9 moles of oxygen in that sample. We got that from the mole ratio derived from the chemical formula.